because of you. Nobody is here or anyone watching us online that is there watching us that is there because of the pastor. He's there watching us from every part of the world because of you, O oh God. Lord, thank you for this glorious hour. Thank you for this moment. Our heart is full of joy for your mercies over our lives. Mercies over our families. Oh, mercy over our nation. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we are worshipped. But as we look into your word, bless us, speak to our hearts. We are ready to receive. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This morning, by the we see that God bless you quickly because of time. Our topic this morning says everything will be fine. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell your neighbor everything shall be fine. Everything shall be fine. Well, I don't like the way you're saying. Say it to him authoritatively or audaciously. Tell him or her that, brother, everything will be fine. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If it's not true, I will not direct you to, I will not direct you to say it to your, your neighbor. God is a God of change. God of multiplication. God of favor. Somebody here, his favor will embarrass your life in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel chapter 1. I want to briefly talk about, tell you about the story that will change the narratives in your life. Amen. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 19. We're going to read, we're going to read from verse 1 to the end. Because of time, we're not able to read that. Okay, let's start from First Samuel chapter one, from verse eight. Malaka shuta la vale de sika la vale ba. Verse eight. And then Hannah, her husband, said unto her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Is there anybody weeping here? Is anybody weeping? I have a message for you. That will be shall be over. Amen. I said that will be shall be over. Amen. Say, why we best thou? And why it is thou not? Why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better than thee to thee than them sons? That's nine. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest was sitting upon his seat at the door post of the temple of Jehovah. Verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto Jehovah and wept sore. That's 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh, Jehovah of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, I remember me. And not forget thy handmaid, but we give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto Jehovah. And all these and all the days of his life. And there shall there shall no rest of come upon his head. Verse 12. And it came to pass as she continued praying before Jehovah. And then I marked her mouth. Verse 13. And and now Hannah. And now, now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunk. Shout hallelujah. You know, when you have a problem, people try to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. When they are going through affliction, when they are going through problems, one of the things that will always happen is that people will misunderstand you. They will say all manner of things about you. Look at her. She was on her own, weeping, crying. Because she had no child. Not just a child. She didn't have a male. When her mate called Penina had too many children. That one was making just of her. And I want to say to somebody here this morning. You're watching me online. If people are making just of you, by the virtue of this message, I pray that you call life in Jesus' name. Amen. This thing is come by come. Say my turn has come. My turn has come. 
preaching and talking about prosperity favor is come by come. And I've been sent here this morning to declare over your, your life that your turn has come. Amen. You don't understand? I say your turn has come. Amen. My life is an example. Benina began to make mockery of her. She had, she had no child. The husband came, lovely husband, said, Hannah, why are you with me? Gain a Brahman. Am I not better than ten sons? You know, in Israel, infertility in Israel was a reproach. If you're not able to give birth to a child in Israel, it was a problem. So all the problems, she was weeping, she was, she was just, and the husband loved that. The Bible says that each time they, they, kill, a, they kill a goat or kill anything, the man will give her more portion. The love was there. There is something. She needed. I want to say to somebody, if you are here watching me online, right here, there is something you need in your life. I said there is something, there is one particular thing you need in your life. I said by the virtue of this habit, that thing will come to you, Jesus. Amen. She said, she was basically, she said, I need a man child. And she began to make a vow. I said, oh God, if you give me this child, this boy, I will give back that child to you, and that boy will serve you. That boy, Edward, that boy happened to be Samuel. The mother, the everybody, the, the priest even was watching him, monitoring him, and said, Woman, have you been drinking? She said, No. The Lord has not been drinking. And a woman, I'm a woman with what? With heavy heart. I'm a man, I'm a woman that, that, that has been crying because the, the reproach has been too much. Not just, not, you know, when you get reproach from people outside, it's not a problem. But the, the worst that can happen to reproach from somebody that you are living the same family with, praise the Lord. That can't be terrible. Maybe your brother, your sister, they say all of this about you. Look at you, you have been in altar. You are not doing anything. You are useless. Look at your life. That one does not really, that one is the one that pains. The one that was paining her was the reproach, was the insult, was the caricature from her maid called Benign. But then I had children. Let's go to verse 19. When God Almighty in His infinite mercy saw her, looked at her, looked at her request, and God changed her story. I want to say to somebody that God will change your story. I said to somebody that God will change your story. Now, the importance of the importance of this message that from my account you need to understand no matter how bad your situation is, God is about to change it. Amen. I said, no matter how, how bad your story has become, no matter how I mean terrible your life has become, there is a change that is coming on that way in Jesus' name. Amen. And they rose up early in the morning and worshiped before Job and returned and came to their house to Rama. And then Kana knew Hannah his wife. And you want to remember that somebody God will remember you. Yes. After they went to Shiloh, came back. The man knew the wife. The man slept with the wife. And God remembered that. God will remember you. Amen. I said to somebody, God will remember you. Amen. Remember, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then because God remembered that she conceived and gave birth to her son. Her faith was persistent. Somebody are here this morning, you're watching me also. I'm telling you, do not give up. The last thing you can do to your life is to give up. God, the Bible says, every year she kept on coming to work. Coming to work to Shiloh. Every year she kept on coming. Every year she kept on coming to Shiloh. She kept on asking God, God bless me. The other year that God comes, she's not going to keep uh, Shiloh again. God blessed her, she became pregnant. And she said, no, she was not telling the husband, no, I will not go to Shiloh. They are able to, you know, my, my child will be a bit, will, will we will be strong enough so that I can go and present the child to, to the altar. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the situation is terrible in your life, there is a way out. I said to someone, there is a way out. Amen. Give me verse 20. I said there is a way out. Amen. I want to say to someone that prayer changes the course of, I mean prayer, prayer changes the course of Hannah's life and impacted an entire, entire nation. And it came to pass that when the time was come about that Hannah conceived and bought bear son, and she called his name Samuel, saying, Because I've asked him of children. Shout out to her. 
fellow wife. But like woman, your womb is bad. You can never conceive. You can never conceive. I don't see you giving bad, bad, bad bed to a child. God bless of a son. The woman was all over the place, banana with her children all over the place, in charge of the home of a canon. Because if you don't have a child, you don't have a son, as case maybe, you are not in the home. And everyone was there doing, you know, they were just doing, and this girl was, this lady was walking out her salvation with fear and trembling. Shout hallelujah. I say you must walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. You must keep on coming to God on deep to deep peace, and God will bless your life in Jesus' name. Verse 21, quickly. Verse 21. And the man in Cana and all his house went up to offer to Jehovah that year the sacrifice and his vow. She was now on the and the vow. Praise the Lord. She conceived that best son. But Hannah went up not up. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be well. And that I will bring him that he may appear before Job and there abide forever. This woman gave birth to a son that was not only son. It was a song that impacted the nation of Israel. And that song, that song was Samuel. Praise the Lord. He didn't just give birth to any kind of song. I mean, God is not about to bless you with any kind of money. He's going to bless you with the money that we have on that city. A money that will have a voice. And to talk now to somebody here, I say, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. God blessed her and gave her a song called Samuel. Samuel impacted the whole nation of Israel. Up to today, we are still talking about Samuel. And after, that, after she presented her song to the, to the other, God gave her other sons, other daughters, and gave her as many as they gave, gave her so many, gave her girls and gave her boys. Shout hallelujah. I prophesied to somebody here that everything will be fine in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The story of the, this, this woman is a story that will try to talk to us this morning. That in, in spite of what you're going through, change is on the way. The one thing you must never miss, don't miss appearing before God. Be persistent in your faith. I mean, be persistent in your faith. Keep on asking God in and out of season. Don't lose hope. You know, many of us, the greatest challenge you always have, you have prayed for two years, you've been asking God for a job, you've been asking God for this and that, and because you are not getting the answers after two years, you give up. This woman did not give up. She kept on appearing before the going to Shiloh. She kept on going. She kept on praying. She kept on, I mean, I mean, she kept on doing all that that was needed. The Bible says, God remember that. God remember that. So it's possible that God is waiting. And God wants to remember you. It's possible that it's not that God. In fact, the Bible says that God closed her womb. If you start from verse 1, to verse 10. He says, God closed her womb. Her womb. She never knew. God wanted to use the infertility, the barrenness to try her. If, if you read that, I think verse, I'll show you. He said, God closed her womb. Let me show you the place. Quickly. Verse 10. Verse 5. Verse 5. We are going to see. It was God that closed her womb. He said first Samuel. We are going to see. The Bible said God closed her womb. You know sometimes God may try to do certain things that you may not be able to do. Things are not working well for you. Praise the Lord. And many of times you are able to demon. Demon. Powers. Only a man. Only a man. The Bible says in verse 5. It says, But unto Hannah he gave a double portion. For he loved Hannah. But Jehovah has shut up a womb. Jehovah has shut up a womb. Many a times what you are going through is just that like God wants to try you. It's not from powers from the Father's side. That's why you need to be careful. If you are going through lack, don't conclude and say, hey, it won't have one hand. Praise the Lord. You need to understand. Look at her. God, it was God that closed her, made her back there that she could not conceive. And when God felt it with God remember that you God and opened it. Beloved, I want to say to someone, it does not take God anything to bless your life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It can't take God anything. Sleepless. God, it will not take God anything to bless your life. In case there is a power that is behind it. I'm going to pray. We pray. But in case God wants to use it, 
to try your faith. Many of many times, what you're going through is not because things are just, I mean, that it, it is because of that brother, that uncle. No, it's because God wants to see you. God wants to see you. God wants to try your faith. Open our womb, close our womb, and open it. I promise I do you. May God remember you. Amen. I say, may God remember you. Amen. You understand? I say, may God remember you. Amen. God remember that. And the womb was open. Boom. Boom. She conceived. May your life be better. Amen. I said to someone, may your life be better. Amen. Every can go up against your life. In case any man has a hand, or a woman has, has her hand on your job, on your affliction, we break that yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But in summary, what I want to tell you, be persistent in your faith. Don't give up. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't say, ah, this is too much. There is nothing that can be too much in this life. As far as God is still alive. I say to you again, there is nothing, I repeat, that can be too much for you if God is alive. If God is with you, nothing shall be against you. Nobody shall be against you. So whatever you see in your life, it's just, it's just an interlude. It's just a preparation for the breakthrough. Praise the Lord. Now, after we read about Hannah, sorry, Benina, is the, 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 the mate, the co-wife, we didn't read about her and her children again. Praise the Lord. All we had was that Benina and her children we are making mockery of this great woman. Praise the Lord. And after we read about it, we never read about it again. Their children, we didn't see their children again in the Bible. We didn't see your children, but we, we kept on reading about what? Someone that became a great man in the land of Israel. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God is about to bless you with a blessing. Amen. That will be, that will surprise your neighbors. Amen. That will surprise all those that have mocked you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is about to give you better one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When the boy came, everything became history. God still gave her more children after she presented that one to God. That guy lived in, 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 in the temple, lived all his life in the temple, and God still gave her extra sons and extra daughters. So in this life, in conclusion, you can say, My trouble is too much. Don't ever say, My trouble is too much if God is with you. Is that right? Don't ever say, this thing I'm going through is too much for me. It can never be too much for God. If it's too much for God, then I agree with you. As long as it's not too much for God. You know, it cannot be too much for you. Shout out. God knows what you're going through. Tell about God knows what you're going through. Can you imagine God closed her womb and God was watching her? Her confession, her attitude, God is watching. God is watching what you are saying, what you are going to say to God. God is watching what I'm telling the truth. Why what you say? Look at it. God closed her womb. And God was watching. I don't know what, what has happened to your life. But see, let me give you this cancer. Mind what you say. Mind your commitment to God. Continue to be, become, I mean, continue being committed to God. Because the same God that that brought you to this planet and he said God will change your story. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God never told her that I close your womb. Did God tell her? Did God tell her? No. Did any prophet tell her? We well, are not reading it now that God closed her womb. Let's say God has closed your womb and you are going to the table for a solution. The solution come. Let's say God closed your business and you are going to for power. Say no, 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 I didn't mean it. No, no, can, can, can you get a solution? You need to be very careful about your life. As long as you are a child of God, washed by the blood of Jesus. Whatever you are going through now is for a moment. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say to you this morning, what I know that is true. Whatever you are going through this morning is for a moment. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say whatever you are going through now, now. I don't care the magnitude. I don't care how big that thing has become. It's for a moment. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's all shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say my time has come. My time has come. My time shall be better. Shall be better. Nothing shall stop me. Shout hallelujah. Can we stand up? He prayed to God this man said, This is my life. I cannot give up. This message is for people that have given up already. He just come to church.